Good morning. Good, no, good, good evening, everybody. Um, I'm used to saying nothing really anymore, but um, my name's Mary Ann Narakovikias, and I am the president of the Oxford Pride and Beautification <coughs> Commission. And it's my pleasure to welcome you all tonight to um, our big event of the year, our reception for the people that bought Hometown Hero banners. Now you've been briefed, I think, when you came to buy them briefly about what's gonna happen, but I wanted to um, just go over it. First off, we're very fortunate. The mayor is gonna lead us in the Pledge of Allegiance and then I will um, alphabetically say the name of the banner of the for the hero with the banner that you have bought. And um, these two ladies will hand if will come and hand the banner to you, so you don't have to try to get out. I saw a couple of people with crutches and stuff like that. Don't worry about getting out. You can just sit, raise your hand, or sit there. Um, and we're asking you not, to, even though it's exciting, um, we're asking you not to open them up until everybody gets their banners. And then it's like Christmas morning, you know, I'll say, <laughs> open the banner. And then you can see um, your hero. You can kind of... Um, that's what it's going to look like, only minus... Stephen's photo in the middle. But I think they turned out very nicely this year. Every year they're a little different. Um, and that looks really nicely. They're really nice, I think. So, um, shall we begin? Is anybody coming in right now? So. So if you don't know him, this is Mike Tooley, our mayor. And um, he's gonna ask you. Oh. Um, when you, you mean before they're holding the banner? No, they need to come up and speak. Uh -huh. okay. okay. Excuse me, Mike. Um, I was just correct. I was not here last year, so it's like I have no recollection of what's going on. Um, like, say, Stephen <coughs> Ashley, before he got his manor, Stephen Ashley's relatives would come here if they wanted to say something about their relative, like what war he fought in, um, if he did any, well, just to go to war is remarkable, but if he did anything remarkable and you would like to tell, share with people, that would be great. Because it was the first or second year <clears throat> all the banners were up and you know you see John Brown and you didn't know anything about them so it's nice to share I think with everybody here um, well he was my grandfather and he um, he fought in Mexico or you know something like that just to make him uh, a little more well known to your hometown. Okay, so if you would stand, if you can. <laughs> yes, make sure. I pledge allegiance to the flag 
Okay, so this is going to be done alphabetically. Um, so if you're like a W, settle back. <laughs> you're not going to have to. But um, Stephen Ashley is the first hometown hero, right? Mm -hmm. Why do we? Why is his family not here? I don't know. You'd have to ask. <laughs> Stephen Ashley's family here. I guess not. Okay. Okay. So he was just our um, our token person that I remember Stephen. I let's see if I can think of something. I remember Stephen as one of my students. He was an excellent student. So you can, if you see him going down the street, you can say he was an excellent student. <laughs> okay. Um, the family of Gerald Ball Sr. Just are you gonna say something sure. soon? Oh good. Good. Yep. Good. Don't peek at it. All right, I'm gonna get out of your way too. Gerald A. Ball. Senior, uh, my grandfather, uh, World War II, Company M, 318th Infantry Regiment, 80th Blue Ridge, with Patton's Third Army. He fought in places, um, some of the places where he saw combat was Argentan, the Ardennes, Battle of the Bulge, to include Bastogne. In May of 1945, he was with the 80th when they liberated the Ebensee subcamp of the Mauthausen concentration camp in northern Austria. Later on in life, he became uh, service manager of Zabriskie's, which was on the corner of Ford and Linden. He later opened up Jerry Ball uh, Shell Station, which is by the 7-Eleven on Canton Street. And he finally retired as an inspector uh, with the Department of Motor Vehicles. Thank you. Um, our next hero is CPO Francis Bateman, who is in the U.S. Navy. Do they want to speak? Yeah. Okay. That's Bateman. I didn't prepare my dad was Spike Bateman. Um, he was in the Navy back in the early 1950s. He uh, actually was, he joined the Navy. He came, he served, served for two years and then he came home and then they called him back to serve when the Korean War uh, took over to the Korean War. And uh, he had gotten married to my mom in September of 1950, and he was over in Korea for a year. And so in June of 1951, my brother Steve was born, the oldest of the 10 of us, and he, uh, he didn't even meet him for six months. So he came home in that December, and he said, first time I held your brother, he didn't like me very much. <laughs> but then he had a few more kids after that. So yeah, but uh, yeah, served his country proudly. And then he did 25 years in the uh, reserves. So, and he enjoyed all of that. So thank you very much. Just to let you know, you can't take those banners home with you tonight. 
<laughs> okay, so they have to stay here. That's why you can come them up here afterwards. We'll take that one down, stand there, have your picture taken, and then you give us back the banner, okay? All right, our next hero is um, Peter Bayer in the U.S. Army. <clears throat> I don't do good off the cuff, so I wrote it down. <laughs> Uh, we wanted to recognize my great uncle Peter Bayard as a hometown hero, not only for his service to his country during a time of war, but also to recognize the wonderful man he was throughout his life. He was born here in Ogdensburg in 1908, the son of Joseph and Rose Lefebvre Bayard, and lived in Ogdensburg all of his life. He worked for the Rutland Railroad Company and served in the Army from 1942 to 1945. He served in many places, including New Guinea, Australia, the Amrati Islands, um, New Britain, the Philippines, where he was seriously wounded shortly after the invasion. He rarely spoke about the war, but one story he did share with us was about when he was injured. He remembered waking up and realizing that he was in a large pile of fallen soldiers, all taken for dead. Gratefully, someone noticed him moving his arm and pulled him from the pile. He also had a near miss with a bullet that went through his dog tags and stopped, was stopped by the metal encased prayer book that he kept in his shirt pocket. He received the Purple Heart, Asiatic uh, Pacific Ribbon with four battle stars and the Philippine Liberation Ribbon with a bronze invasion star. And all of his war time bravery aside, how I remember him most was as a gentle caring man who spent his life helping everyone around him. He spent countless hours helping my father with the cows and even more hours letting me win at games of old maid. <laughs> he used to spend summers helping his sister and her husband, and he was always lending a hand to his friends, relatives, neighbors, always quietly, never looking for anything in return. Above all, he was a man of God, and his strong, quiet faith was a great example to all of us. Uncle Pete was such a humble man that if he knew his picture was gonna be displayed on a banner in the city, he'd probably be the first one to say he doesn't deserve it, but we would like everyone who sees it to know that he does. Airman Stephen Krauss, who is in the Air Force. Okay. Okay. Did you want to say a few words? No. It's okay. Okay. Next. Um, James Brown in the U.S. Army. Do you want to say a few words? Okay. Thank you. Um, just alternate. Jared Dodd, who was in the U.S. Army, was in the U.S. Army. Okay, I'm going to leave it here. Jared. No, he's, no one's here. Oh, no one's here. I'm sorry. I should buy it for now. Um, Airman, you know, Sergeant E5 Thomas Bouchard, who was in the U.S. Army. Mary, do you want to speak? Tom graduated in 67. He went into the service. He was shot in the back in Cambodia with an arrow. Um, came back home, became a fireman. And this one winter day, there was a fire and a woman screaming, my baby, my baby's in the house. And so Tom psh, fell, broke his back. So he went through cancer. He, he lost a leg from a fall. Uh, you name it, he went through it. But he's my hero. He'll always be my hero. <laughs> so, Thank you. 
Mary, this is how many you have of the others? Three. <laughs> I will put one up over here and put it down. Good for you. Okay, well, I'll put it down. Okay, then our next hero is um, Mark Cause. No? no one's here. Okay. If no one, if we'll take the banner and put it up, the DPW will put it up. So it won't, he will be up for everyone to see. Um, Alan LeClaire was in the U.S. Navy. I'm not really hearing you, but I hear reading his bike. Oh, okay. <laughs> Which was here. I know, I don't know what happened to it. Oh no. <laughs> I, wait, maybe I have it. Um, Mr. LeClaire's family is out of the area in California and they have asked that his uh, bio be read this evening. And just because I don't think it was mentioned, and the reason we're asking people to come speak at the podium is that we are recording this. There are a number of families that are unable to attend because they do live out of the area. So this will allow other family members and friends to see the broadcast at a later date. So uh, Alan LeClaire was born in Ogdensburg, New York. He graduated from Ogdensburg Free Academy in June of 1986. He enlisted in the United States Navy in December 1985 after recruit training uh, MRCS LeClaire completed Machinery Repair A School in San Diego, California. His assignments included Shore Intermediate Maintenance Activity, Newport, Rhode Island, February 1987 through February 1990, Naval Reserve Readiness Center, Great Lakes, Illinois, March 1990 through April 1993, Shore Intermediate Maintenance Activity, Bremerton, Washington, April 1993 through August 1995. USS Samuel Elliott Morrison, FFG 13, September 1995 through August 1998. And USS John F. Kennedy, CV 67, October 1998 through June 2000. MRCS LeClaire's decorations include Navy condemnation, com Condemnation Medal, Navy Achievement Medal, four awards, Materius Unit Com Commander, Good Conduct Medal, three awards, Navy BAT E, two awards, Naval Defense Service Medal, Armed Forces Expedition Medal, Sea Service Ribbon, three awards, Naval Reserve Sea Service Ribbon, Armed Forces Reserves Medal, Expert Pistol Shot Medal. MSR LeClaire was killed in service in June 2000. He is survived by his wife, Linda LeClaire, his son, Zachary A. LeClaire, and his two stepchildren, Amanda and Michael Hedrick. The US um, most of you people probably knew my dad as the bug man locally. <laughs> Born and raised right here in Ackersburg, Linden Street. But he uh, met my mom, she was 16, he was whatever, and he had two kids when he went into the war. And he got hurt. I don't really know how, but he was in a hospital in New Jersey for quite a while. And uh, I always ask him what happened during the war and stuff. And he said the best thing he ever heard was the singing. He was on the ship and they'd haul the Germans, the prisoners, back to England. He said they'd sing. He said it was just amazing to listen to the Germans do all their singing at night. <laughs> He'd give them cigarettes. Always was getting down there, giving them cigarettes. But uh, yep, he's just a good guy overall. Everybody that knew him liked him. So 
Um, the next family um, nominated one, two, three, four, one, two, three. Um, Leo Lutzik, Leo H. Lutzik, Robert Lutzik. Are, are you Mr. Mark Davis? Mark, that's right. My neighbor. Come on up, Mark. Do you want to talk? Do you want to speak, Mark? Do you want to talk about the Lutzik's? And yes, they're related to okay. Elsa. Yeah. Yes. 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 Uh, somehow my grandfather made it in Augsburg, New York, ended up marrying my grandmother. Uh, she was 16 and he was 32. He spent 35 years in the United States Coast Guard, retired in 1937. When the war happened, he re enlisted and he was a captain in the Navy for four years. Her sons, Mabel Luxick's sons, my great, uh, uncles, uh, Leo, he went, He enlisted in oh, 1937 in the Army. Um, he got hurt in North Africa, First Division. Um, he, then he was discharged. My uncle Leo, uh, Uncle Robert, he was a pilot in the uh, Army Air Corps until the end of the war. But. My grandfather also had two ships sank out from underneath him during World War II and survived. Through the whole crew or his life, he only lost one sailor. So, yeah. Um, our next, I don't think you're all right. Our next people are honoring Joseph Nick. Donald. Yeah, yeah, sure. they're not here. Yeah. No, Joseph they're not here. McDonald was in the United States Navy, and they um, did a little story about him in the newspaper. Um, yeah. Did we do Joseph and Andrew in the end? Yeah, he's going to do Joseph and Andrew. Oh, okay. And so, we're going to ask you a doll and put some of the pictures in our paper. So many people have to know about Joseph. Uh, Andrew and Joseph, respectively, uh, are my great uncle and my grandfather. Mm -hmm. And I'm very lucky that I still have my grandfather with me, who will be 100. Uh, later on this year. Uh, he's probably one of a very small population out there that was present both at the Normandy invasion and at the Iwo Jima invasion. The, uh, he made it back from the, uh, from the war and uh, eventually retired from federal law enforcement about 40 years ago. And he's been playing golf and putting up with my grandmother, who's also a, uh, a local. The, uh, she's a Gerard uh, ever since. Uh, Andrew, my great uncle, was uh, appropriate for a guy who spent his entire life working on the Great Lakes and on the St. Lawrence. He joined the uh, Army and they promptly put him in a supply unit that ran ships uh, supplying it so he couldn't get away from that. Uh, he told me that probably the most nervous he was during the entire war was he wounded a deer in India when their supply vessel was tied up on a riverbank and then followed it into the underbrush with a uh, the small army carbine and got well away from her before he remembered. I'd only thought then, Brian, oh, that's right, there's tigers here. But hopefully that's the uh, the worst thing that, he, uh, that happened to him the whole time. Thank you. Our next hero is Edward McCarthy. 
Um, I'll make it quick. My father, his brothers, I think every one of my uncles is in the service. He never really spoke too much about it. He wasn't in the war, but he was a paratrooper, which is crazy because I'd never jump out of an airplane. Why would you jump out of a perfectly good airplane? Um, my father owned his own taxi business, Seaway Taxi, when I was younger. Went back to college and was a nurse at the psych center till till he passed away. So that's my story. My father is my hero. On, um, <clears throat> on behalf of the McRoberts families, I would like to thank the Pride and Beautification Committee for their hard work and dedication in honoring our veterans. This recognition appears to be spreading to our neighboring communities and is vital to the history and honor that each community holds in such high regard. Nelson and Jerry McRoberts exemplified dedication and service to their country, communities, and families. Nelson honorably served four years in the Air Force during the Korean War. He was awarded the Korean Service Medal and Good Conduct Medal during this time. After his service, Nelson pursued a career with the United Airlines and continued his passion for aviation. He eventually returned to the St. Lawrence River where he and his wife, Peg, created lifelong North Country memories with family and friends. His brother, Jerry, little brother, Jerry, my father-in-law, served his country during the Vietnam War and was honorably discharged in 1970. He returned to Ogdensburg to raise his family with his wife, Anne, and continued his service through the Army Reserves for over 20 years. In retirement, Jerry volunteered as a driver for the disabled American veterans, frequently making trips to Syracuse. On behalf of our family, we would like to thank all of our service members, past and present. Thank you. Are you going to do Eugene also? Yeah. Okay, so he's going to do both. He's going to do both. I don't have anything prepared, but I'm sure a lot of people know my grandfather, Parker. <laughs> <laughs> They're probably just leave it at that. <laughs> was quite the character on town too. So. <laughs> uh, our next hero is uh, Robert Payne. Is that you? No. Is that you? Doesn't matter. Robert, They're coming. I probably can't do justice for Bob because I didn't know him when he was in the service. All I heard were the fun times that he had while he was there because he went was in the Vietnam era, but never went to Vietnam. And so I won't repeat the <laughs> it, it, He had a good time, 
when he could. <laughs> Next hero is Donald Percy Perry, Perry, Perry Senior. No? No? I'm sorry. Donald Perry. Donald Perry. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Hero is John H. Powers II. Yeah, I don't uh, have anything prepared. I actually just found out this afternoon, thanks to my cousins, that they uh, submitted my father's name. Um, he was a guy that, since I was young, never pass anyone that was in the service without thanking them for theirs. And I appreciate the committee in the city um, that started this to uh, recognize everyone and their family members. And um, I know he would appreciate being recognized today. Thank you. I joined the army in 1977. And, um, I went to Germany. Back in that day, you didn't have a cell phone or internet. So after three years, I came home. I was so homesick. Uh, 9-11 happened. It spoke to me. It spoke volumes to me, especially when we had no airspace. So I went and I joined the National Guard. Ended up in Iraq in 2005. It was, I, I was in Iraq at 42. It was like with all these 18 year olds, I felt like their mother, but I loved it. I loved it. Sergeant. He didn't hear you, Marianne. Marianne, he didn't hear you. He didn't hear you. Stuart Richards. He's coming. Unlike some of the other speakers, I do have some impromptu experience, but I won't bore you or stay too long. Uh, first of all, I'd like to uh, thank the committee and all of the people who work on the committee. I think they deserve a big round of applause. So, uh, my dad served in Korea. He was a paratrooper, and uh, I never figured out why he became a paratrooper, but then he said, uh, you got extra pay. And uh, so they'd have to dive or jump every month. And uh, they jump from 600 feet and 1200 feet. And they would jump from 600 feet because uh, that gave the enemy less time to shoot at you. But if you were at 1200 feet, you had 600 more feet to be worried about. Uh, when he came home, he said uh, there was nobody. It was like he had been forget forgotten. <coughs> So, I wasn't going to do this. So, a couple of years ago, we took the time to go on an honor flight. I don't know how many of you had that opportunity, but if you have it, please do it. It's just a wonderful experience. And when we went on the honor flight, he said, you know, it feels like people appreciated what I did for our country. Um, so he was a little concerned when we showed him the picture that we used, um, which showed him um, holding a firearm. And he, he thought that um, 
the people who were putting the posters up were going to be people dressed in their uniform. And I said, Dad, no, it's to honor you for your service. So uh, I came here tonight and I asked for the uh, poster back because he didn't want to put it up. So I immediately went to his house and uh, his girlfriend uh, convinced him that he should let us put it up. Mm -hmm. So he changed his mind and he's, he's here today. And Uh, I saw them here. Yeah, because I saw them. Thank you. I thank you for doing this for me. My grandson done it for me. I was in Vietnam in 68, 69, and I come home from Augsburg and went to work for the city of Augsburg. Ross Germano hired me, and I appreciate it. I've had a good job, had a good family, the best wife anybody could ask for, and, and I couldn't be prouder. And I'm a proud Vietnam veteran. Only thing I ask of people is I am a Vietnam veteran. I've home and I've had a wonderful family, a wonderful job. If you don't worry or something, don't don't blame the veterans. Mm -hmm. A lot of good men have not come home. I come home, and but they just ask then what the country asked for. That's all I ask. Thank you very much. Well, I wasn't going to cry, but I can't. She's looking at me like that, but I just want to say a few words about my, my special, my best friend. He served our country in the Vietnam War. I'd like to say a couple words about my son. I'm very proud of him. Well, I never had that again. I've never heard a complaint. You could be serving the country well. And you've got about 25 medals in Griffith. Thank <laughs> you. 
Listen, everybody here, you got to say something. Both my uncle Royal and my father were veterans of World War II. Uh, my father served with the U.S. Coast Guard uh, out of the Caribbean, like mine stuff, you know, for uh, submarines and stuff. Uncle Royal was a member of Merrill's Marauders, a Medi. See a lot of action, had a lot of medals and a lot of stuff. But two great guys, as a lot of you know. So. Thank you very much. I wanted um, to tell you, thank, I know it's hard to get up and speak, but um, we appreciate it, we who are in the audience, to get a little picture of what they were as a great guy or a good grandfather or a nice husband. And I'm so glad that um, Mr. Seymour put put his wife in, so we had one woman that was <laughs> there. Okay, so um, we're gonna, you can come up to see how Stephen Ashley's um, banner is like that. So that's how it's gonna look hanging. And if you wanna, after I say go, oh, they're so good, aren't they? <laughs> <laughs> what? I didn't hear what you said, Mark. Um, this was a, a, it was an effort, but, um, it was an effort that we all enjoy on Pride Music Education to get to meet people that did this, gave up a year or five years or whatever for their company, for their um, hero. But also we couldn't have put something together like this for the people that helped us, like this lady sitting right here, Kathy Jock. And Andrea Smith, um, Matt Curatello, who gave a really nice article in the paper on Thursday. So make sure you buy the paper on Thursday <laughs> so you'll see it. And um, did I forget anyone else? Did you say Andrea? I didn't hear you. Oh, did you Andrea. No. Oh, DPW, sorry. What? DPW. Oh, well, of course. DPW. We could, not, we could not do half the things that we do without DPW cooperating, cooperating and listening to nine women tell them which, which way. No, it's too high. No, it's too low. So they are wonderful. And we appreciate everything that they do. Now you remember when I say go, <laughs> you can open up your uh, banner. What? Oh no, Andrew, I did something wrong. Um, oh. Um, that, this little stand, if you want your picture taken with the banner and the piece like it, please let me help you. The stand looks great, but it is very 
very finicky and will fall apart if you look at it wrong. So just be patient and I'm trying to help every one of you who would like to just put your hand around and hopefully it won't fall apart if I can't promise you today. Thank okay. you for your patience. Okay. So I'm getting ready to say go. I can tell. And have a company on your way up. Yeah. I was gonna say that. <laughs> Just don't take have a blue a Just don't take the blue ones. But I would advise you not to take a blue one. <laughs> you can look at Barb's fingers. They're all blue. I don't know what they use, but don't take a blue one. They're all blue. Okay, okay here we go. You ready? Untie that ribbon. And uh, remember, you have to give them back, and you'll get them. Probably Veterans Day. We'll have a little something and you can come and get them. Okay, go. Yeah. When are they going to be put up in the air? Memorial Day, I think. Yeah. Before Memorial Day. Before Memorial Day. <laughs> Oh, wow. oh, thank you. You are so